wanted to, you know, look good, look the part. Mm -hmm. I went into a shop to buy a watch that I couldn't afford. Mm -hmm. And then I remembered seeing some watch online for about 50 cities. So I bought that watch for 50 cities, which was like all the money I had. Mm -hmm. and then I put the watch on my hands, took a picture, put it on my WhatsApp DP. Somebody said, oh, nice watch. Are you selling it? And I said, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I sold that watch, made some profits off it. And I was like, ah, if I just make this profit just on my phone, right. mm -hmm. what if I sold two or sold three or sold four? Then the idea came. So I took the pen and the paper, the numbers game started. And I said, ah, let me just challenge myself to sell only three in a week. How about four? Then that's what happened. I called a guy back to bring two more of the watch I just bought from him. I purchased two, sold the two off and bought three. Then it moved from there. So I was selling watches basically, and I was being mocked for that, you know, because <laughs> where I used to work and I resigned, you know, everybody is waiting to see, let's see where he's going. He mm -hmm. said he has resigned. Then suddenly I'm hawking watches at the car parks and uh, in traffic, and, you know, the news started going around that. Now he's selling watches, so people will laugh every time they see me. But that was the first time that people laughed at me, and I pitied them because I had a picture clearly in my mind, and they couldn't see it. So the more they mocked, mm -hmm. I kind of pitied them that, ah, these guys don't know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And I kept going forward. Selling watches moved into uh, repairing watches. So I learned how to repair watches. Mm -hmm. I come to your office. I clean your watches. I repair your watches in your office. I was trying to create the brand of uh, the corporate watch repairer. Because okay. I realized that a lot of high profile people have expensive watches. They can't take these watches to the roadside repairer who might mm -hmm. scratch your watches. So right. that spot was there. Another important stage, I always say that find a gap in the market and build a market in the gap. So everybody seems to be rushing into what is already out there. But take your time and find a gap out there, something no one is doing, and fill that spot and build your own market in there. So that spot was up for grabs. There was no corporate watch repairer in Ghana. And I said, no, nah, I'm going to get there. So branding properly, repairing watches, and I moved from, I'm like, okay, I now know how the watches are made. How about we take the next crazy step of yeah. making one? Took the pen and paper. The thinking game started from the name and all that. And because I was selling watches, I, I knew the buyer preferences, what people looked out for when they're buying a watch, the mistakes that the watch brands had because I was repairing all types of watches. So I knew the kind of mistakes to avoid in my designs. I already had a client base due to my years of selling watches. I was that go-to guy for watches. So it was not difficult to hit the ground running because mm -hmm. I was already in the field. Yeah. I had built experience and I had collected clients database so right. yeah that's how we moved to pavement there, there are lots yeah. of things where we, we, you jammed in there that <laughs> will come to the details but let, yeah. let's let's Kusaya, do the same yeah yes. i just want to know a little bit more about ispace first of all mm -hmm. before we okay leave. so um ispace started 2013 um okay. basically to respond to the need of um space and training for entrepreneurs because in ghana as you all know, for you to get a space to work in, you probably have to pay two, three to five years in advance, right? And um, mm -hmm. that's one of those Achilles heels, because again, if you're paying in dollars, that's a lot of your marketing, yeah. your resource money just gone. Mm -hmm. So we then kind of created a co-working space um, mm -hmm. for entrepreneurs to be able to kind of work from. So they use a shared space. Um, but then we realized that not only did they need a space, they also lacked um, training resources. So we're able to kind of give them technical training um, in terms of coding um, and building websites, apps, or whatnot. And then moved on to, again, given the business fundamentals that they needed. Because I think you touched on the point um, about entrepreneurship. Everybody thinks that they can do it. But business is one of those things where once you get in it, you realize that it's not what you thought it is, right? Um, so a lot of things that you have to learn. It's like marriage, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I mean, it's a great analogy. That's pretty much I what find. it is. <laughs> <laughs> so we provided a lot of training. Um, so for iSpace, we pretty much focus on capacity building. So 
being the space for entrepreneurs and providing all the resources that they need for them to build their businesses. So. Wow, amazing. Trying to make entrepreneurship out of an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. When you're an entrepreneur yourself. Yeah. That's yeah. just a very mm -hmm. interesting one. See, I am just one woman who likes to cut the cheese. I cut to the cheese. I'm not like men when they want to, you know, chase you. They're like describing your hair to you. I want straight to the point. Yeah. I've got my pen and paper here. Mm -hmm. I want to start a business. I know. I'm a buyer and I'm a client. I know that I go through five stages when I want to buy something, especially okay. something like maybe a camera or a TV or a phone. I don't just get up to go. I go through the five stages of the purchaser, mm. you know. Now, for you providing it or somebody who's been going to start the business, can you give me specific pointers? You know, don't tell me that it was God. Oh, no. And <laughs> I, I don't think any one of us would do yeah, that. Yeah, um, and God dropped the money in my dream and all yeah, that. The most important thing that you touched on was first passion is important but mm -hmm. that's soft skill right so you have to uh, identify a problem so the gap in the market now and uh, do the whole business analysis do you have enough skills to even launch that business to start with you were talking about experience a lot of people do things because they see somebody else doing it <laughs> very dangerous so one identify the problem but I always tell people find the customers first before you start a business mm. because how? How do, how do I find so that? you um you were talking about um, the watches, right? Yeah. Before, you were just repairing watches. Uh -huh. yeah. But then by building that clientele, you realize that, okay, so there's a need for yeah. that watch before you even launch Caveman. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you already have a clientele. You don't want a situation where you start off the business, then you start finding clients because okay. you're going to waste a lot of resources now finding the people. So the idea, you have to have the experience and ensure that the infrastructure that you need to launch that business is there, right? You don't, again, if you didn't have people that um, probably trained to um, repair the watches and everything, yeah. problematic. So then yeah. what's going to happen? So these things are very important, but I'll also let you touch on. Well, is it Anthony, I'm going <laughs> to come specifically to Anthony, so that you're, you need to find the passion, mm -hmm. find people, the ready markets, mm -hmm. find the gap, like you said, mm -hmm. and fill it. I'm really interested in persons who have, who have a passion, who, who have looked for the gap and is empty, mm -hmm. you know, they can fill it, and have tried to want to start. I want the pivotal thing that shoots you up to start, which is always money, definitely. <laughs> never. If it's, it's not money, it's never. Oh, I'm glad. In my okay. case, it was not money. Great. I didn't start with mm. huge capital. I bought one watch for 50 cities. Okay. So when it comes to the topic of capital, I always prioritize strategy. Okay, mm -hmm. let me make it practical here. You bought a watch for 50 cities mm -hmm. and resold it. Yeah. Did you not have some food to eat before? Because I, I don't have food to eat. And, I'm, I, yeah. and I have so that. So the operational, I'm sh operational yeah. expense. Okay, expense. I'm yeah. sure but I'll let's spend let's that 50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to know how yeah. I can balance yeah. my life. Yeah. yeah. Well, here comes the risk element, right? right? When I was where I used to work, it was not a very good job, I should say. And, um, Are they watching today? They'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was not really proud of it, but I had to pay the bill, so right. I was working there. But then it got to a point where I called one guy who was doing the same job, and I said, Solomon, we've been here for one year now. Have you been able to save any money in your account? He said, no. And I said, okay, logic tells me that the next year we will not be able to save any. The next year, next three years, we will not save any money, but don't you have dreams of, like, buying land someday, how would that happen if you're not saving anything? Something has to change. So I've, I had that urgency that something has to change. So I look up myself very well, and I know that I am good at a few things, a couple of things. I was so confident that I was too talented to end up not doing right. anything. And I said, okay, one thing that I lack now is time. I don't have time. Because working here does not allow me to utilize my creativity. So I said, okay. When I have time, I'm definitely sure I'll find something to do. So, so I took that risk. Yeah. So that becomes like a, your, your currency that you work with. It, it, it's time. It's yeah. time. Time becomes yeah. something yeah. like yeah. What yeah. are some of the things that, uh, just in the interest of time as well, mm -hmm. we don't have much, uh, much left, but okay. what are some of the things that kills a lot of fresh startup businesses in your personal experiences? Let me start off with you, Jatan. Um, so that's what you talk about money, right? right? A lot of um, entrepreneurs been through cash a lot. So you kind of spend what you don't have. Okay. And then a lot of them also, <sighs> when you raise funds, uh -huh. you just think it's a bottomless pit and you just keep spending, spending, spending. And not concentrating on the sales. 
Because ultimately, the reason why you're in business is your customers, right? So you need to be involved in the sales process. So again, not comfortable. I like the fact that you sold one, then you call the same person, yeah. and then you yeah. just, you know, repetition. Yeah. I mean, so she said how much you sold it for, actually. <laughs> I want to get the math. <laughs> I'm sure the person will call him and find out. Yes. Yeah. But you have to have that sales process, right? And ensure, be very frugal. Do not spend money you don't have. Mm -hmm. And don't live that flashy lifestyle, right? Don't try to wear clothes and shoes and, you know, be seen on planes taking pictures, knowing full well that's your company this money. This table, you're shaking right? desire. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I want to set an ins instance, an instance for you, okay? Mm. And um, in this situation, I know a lot, lot of young people are watching, or not mm. even young, probably mm. younger and older watching, mm. who have started their own businesses, and they're saying, so the thing is, I'm, I'm doing beats. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm, it's on social media. Mm. I'm calling friends. I'm mm. doing every single thing that goes by the book. But I'm not getting the breakthrough just like iSpace right. and Caveman. Yeah. Let, me, let me touch on that. Yeah. Um, one thing I have realized that Ghanaian entrepreneurs do very wrong, okay? Mm -hmm. We like to cut corners mm -hmm. when it comes to quality. We like to cut corners. I believe that if a product is quality enough, you wouldn't have to do as much work to get it up mm -hmm. compared to when the product is not quality. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in my case, there's some... Um, when I was making leather straps, okay, repairing watches, I realized that people have good watches, but the leathers are bad. Right. They don't have to buy a new watch. So let me serve those people. Mm -hmm. I went to Cantamanto. I spent almost two months there being an apprentice to a shoemaker. I go there, I sit down, I'm polishing shoes, I'm stitching to learn how leather works, okay? Then I start buying equipment. And what happens is that there's this glue type of glue that I buy called the leather cement which I import quite expensive to import for a little volume but typically the Ghanaian entrepreneur will be like Shumika glue can do that thing ah, why are you buying this thing Shumika glue can do it because it's cheaper mm -hmm. but that's not the right thing for the job so I could use Shumika glue for cheaper mm -hmm. but I know it would not last compared to the right glue that I have to import. So a lot of so us are compromising on quality. On quality. Right. Yeah. We compromise on quality to cut corners mm -hmm. and yeah. make more money. But then, again, identifying your client, the, your client base is very important, right? Because right. you're talking about social media. Let's say if your beats are 20 cities, right? Mm -hmm. But you're on social media. That yeah. doesn't make sense, yeah. right? But then the people that you're targeting might not even be on social media. Yeah. So okay. you're there spending money on social media when the people that you're targeting are off social media. Mm -hmm. So you should not just be doing social media because everybody's doing it. Mm -hmm. And I would say stop marketing to your friends. They are your friends, <laughs> right? They, and because you have, let's say, 50 city friends and you're selling something for a thousand cities and then you stress them and so say they why they're not they buying. buy it, they give you the 50 cities and they owe the 950. Right, and then collapse your business, <laughs> yeah. right? Don't so complain about the price. Right, Don't so complain. basically, your clientele, mm -hmm. you go to find your clientele where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So if you're selling something for a thousand cities, then make sure that if you're on social media, you're targeting people that can afford mm -hmm. two, three thousand cities. Mm -hmm. But if you, your clientele bases your, fr well, I, you're just your friends, your business is going to collapse mm -hmm. because you're forcing them to buy something that they can't afford. And then you probably go to church and say, you know, it's the old lady in the village. Mm -hmm. No, it's because you've got a bad marketing strategy. Yeah. So, you know. So, uh, so, uh, so, sorry, but let me ask, um, this is more economical. So mm -hmm. in Ghana, is the environment uh, serene enough to help you grow, start your own business? Yeah, I would say, yeah. yeah. I believe it's the best place to do a yeah. business. Because that, that's what entrepreneurship okay. is, right? You don't right? think luck applies here? At all. Like, there's, there's no such thing the as network luck. Network applies. Network applies, yeah. not luck. Yeah. Is there any tool, per se, that uh, has been uh, helpful to start your business, considering that, it, like, how Ghana's economy is structured, that probably has helped? to say that um, if you are doing business in Ghana as a young person who's probably just finished university mm -hmm. and you want to start your business, you can stand on these things. I think um, talking to people that are already established or mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, like you say, network, um, going to hubs, um, you know, don't waste money in renting big, big offices. Those are the kind of things that you kind of need to. So the network is very important, mm -hmm. having a mentor is very, very yeah. important. Somebody that can kind of guide you through this process yeah. um, okay. is very important. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm curious, Anthony, what's the real importance of choosing a right name for a business? Oh, that's everything when it comes to that. 
Um, the name <laughs> <laughs> you have. You no, have I like this question because she, because we have a lot of Ghanaian businesses with uh, they, they pair the name of the man and the woman. And right. <laughs> <laughs> J, well, JM, there's, the, JMFA. there's one very good and thing I like about day. about a good business name. Okay, mm -hmm. the business name should sell the business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Upon mention, I need to be able to tell what a company does when I hear the name. Mm -hmm. um, you shouldn't mention your name and then people will be like, what do they do? You are taking a few steps backwards in that regard. So why Caveman then? Caveman watches. <laughs> well, you know, I did not add watches to it because we have a bigger plan okay. going forward. But the, the reason behind the name Caveman, when I started making leather straps, I, I had always been an indoor guy, but I became extremely like reserved. I, would, I was always in my room. Two reasons. That's the funny side of it. People would be like, Charlie, where are you? Charlie, I did my cave inside. Oh. That was the funny side of it. Okay. Now, the real reason is that I start watching documentaries, geological findings, and people finding relics from the cavemen, the things that they made mm -hmm. so many years ago that are still perfect now. I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, those guys didn't have technology like we do now. The built pyramids mm -hmm. that the modern day scientists cannot understand how they built that structure mm -hmm. with the dimensions and the specifications mm -hmm. now. So I'm like, nah, those guys are probably more intelligent than we, we think and how quality their products are. So I said, okay, I'm going to build a brand that will use the elements of originality because what the cavemen did were very original. They built things from scratch with their hands, not diluted by technology. That's the originality mm -hmm. base of it. So that originality, durability of a product is what I want to incorporate in my brand. That's why the name Caveman came. Okay, quite wow. ancient, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm throwing that question <laughs> to you as well. I oh, say. Yes. It's just <laughs> basically an individual space. So it's a space when an individual gets to kind of implement their dreams, their ideas, whatever it is that they want to do. So your own space for you to grow. Um, and then when you look at our logo, we've got like a pyramid inside of it. And those are three points that we believe that you need so development funding and policy those are the things that um we feel that you need in this um, system for you to kind of flourish look you, you make it all sound <laughs> sweet yeah, like and it happened in a flash and I boom, got that boom, this that that so let's throw it back to you guys yes. on the some of the crazy challenges that made you nearly give up oh um what doing ice space or the the ice business space. In general? Um, and then caveman watches as well. Okay, so for me, I think um, when we first started iSpace, we were in Osu and we had the business deal with um, one, you know, um, telco that was willing to give us a whole lot of money, um, but they wanted to brand my space their colors, right? So I then made an agreement with another telco and pretty much say that was one of the worst decisions I ever made because mm. if I did go with that telco, I'd probably be a millionaire by now and I had more money to go back my head, but no. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I still kind of <laughs> look back at that situation and think that was one of the worst decisions, but then it kind of um, made me understand risk yeah. um, and making decisions based on passion because I yeah. loved my company colors. I wasn't going to give it up yeah. for your company colors. So one of those things, you might make mistakes, but that's entrepreneurship. You learn, you grow, and just adapt, and then make sure that you don't make the same mistakes again. So. Okay, I'm going to go to you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for one me, of the most challenging times for you. Uh, for me, um, a challenge that made me almost give up, I can't point one out. The reason being that I have come to accept that the challenges are ingredients of the, the business. Mm -hmm. So no challenge ever comes to me that shocks me. Before I started, I've been ready for anything. I think I've not even seen the worst of them yet. Have you had critics, people speak against your brand oh that shit. has pierced your heart? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, oh shit. honestly, yeah. I'm actually waiting for more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what what, what did they say? The level, of, the level that I've been expecting, I haven't gotten that yet. Okay. I may be doing something right, mm. but I'm still waiting for, for that, to for that time to come. Yeah. So every time I talk to people at work that people haven't said this about us, mm. uh, about us yet, but if they do, what would you say? What would you say? So we play out scenarios in our minds. We find solutions to them before they happen. Mm. You know, I throw out scenarios that what if somebody says this? What if somebody says, what would you do? What would you do? We constantly do that. So when they come, they don't really shock us. Mm. I'll, I'll tell you one <laughs> and then I'll, I'll uh, soothe it. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. So with me, I get yeah. things like I'm brash, I'm arrogant. I shake tables and all of those other stuff. But I keep telling people that um, if you do what I do, you will not have time 
to babysit people, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. Because my dream is to help somebody implement their dream. So I always say that if you tell somebody to dream, make sure you're there when the nightmare starts, mm -hmm. right? So I cannot be one of those people that don't have confidence because I need to have enough confidence to support you. Yeah. Yeah. See, so, but usually what happens then is an insecure person will find me as brush and telling the truth that is brush in this country, then yeah. it is what it is. Because I can't sugarcoat entrepreneurship for yeah. you because when you enter, I, I mean, doing this job, mm -hmm. I know somebody behind is looking at you and thinking, oh, she's glamorous on TV, but okay. yeah, but they don't know the time you wake up to be here. Mm -hmm. Can you say that again? <laughs> 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 you know, so that is part of the thing. And I think, so, yeah, yeah I get that all the time, but I'm used to it now, that's yeah. why. All right. Yeah. Finally, um, yeah. you, you spoke about mentorship mm. earlier on. It's very important to find a mentor who will tell you the truth, mm -hmm. the right. real truth, what we can say on TV or mm -hmm. on radio, the real truth. Because people, most entrepreneurs have to look the part, play the part. So we carry this image on TV and, um, you know, you have to it's look a, a certain yeah. way. But so <laughs> is it because there's a difference between an entrepreneur and a business person? <laughs> that's you know, a big one. That's a, that's a, that's <laughs> yeah. a huge topic on its right. own, right? <laughs> but it's this thing happening now. Yeah. I mm. think it's due to social media that right. people are getting high off congratulations. Mm -hmm. That's how I put it. The award schemes have taken the opportunity to throw out random awards and mm. people feel fulfilled when they are holding plaques on social media. Mm. Congratulations, you're doing great. It's, it's empty, it's mm. nothing. Mm. It's nothing. Don't spark the war on awards. Oh, yes. No, no not just come and kill some awards. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying yeah, some, awards. Yeah, some, yeah, of some of them. Yeah. It's becoming yeah. a problem now. And some people mm. go into that because of that glam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You feel CEO of this and mm. that. Now you open a business page on Facebook. Everybody's you are CEO. You. Everybody's you know. CEO, People yes. are rushing into that. Yeah. Find a, a mentor that will tell you the truth. The truth, yeah. How much he really makes and right. how so much the public thing he makes. This. So um, <laughs> in wrapping up, so mm. I saw Caveman do a promotion on, on Twitter. Okay. And he said they were giving out uh, free watches, you know, and I uh, just had to retweet. Uh, and I think they were using Trigmatic as an influencer. I'm we saying that the <laughs> hard, the hard truth. That. I'm shaking yeah. the table. <laughs> yeah. So oh, that was Trigmatic. So, not I tweeted, so I tweeted, uh, and then I posted a picture of mine, which I just received as a gift. And they didn't mind me. And I said, "This is bad." Right. Says, but you see, from, now he's here, from, so from right. Cape, you can take a new the one. The issue is that it's always good to talk to the boss. We're locking the studio. We're locking the studio. And I said, "Cape, didn't mind me." I sent two tweets, and then I didn't get any work on that. Anyway, the thing is, I've loved my watch, and I'm very sure for those who follow my personal IG page, you realize that I have this brown watch that I put on all the time, and it's a caveman watch all the time. Yeah, I got one. For somebody as well. Thank you. Hey. Not the one coming to get married on seventh. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, thank definitely. you so glad, much, uh, Josiah, yes. and uh, thank you, thank you so but much. But real quickly, how do people reach out to you? Sorry. Oh, so real for quickly. me yeah. on social media, J K E Y I S O N. That's okay. across the board. So J K E M E Y I S O N. Okay. okay. And you can just reach me wherever. So. Okay. Well, we are very active on social media, yeah. all the platforms. And they didn't mind me. Caveman watches one word. <laughs> Caveman watches one yeah. word on mm. all social media platforms. Yeah. The website is cavemanwatches.com. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, How much discount do I have when I come? <laughs> we'll talk about that. Off, okay. Off All right. Thank you so much. I hope that you have learned a lot. These are people who have started, tried, and tested. When mm -hmm. they say it, you better believe it. So follow the social media handles. You might learn a thing or two. But we'll come back shortly with our big and biggest interview. This